Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis in Tokyo, Japan. So, I wanted to talk about what I learned out here. And when you decide to come out here, what to look for, what to expect, how to get a good deal, how to communicate, maybe take a lesson out here. I'm going to sum all that up for you today. Almost time to go. Right, guys it's a blustery super windy day out here i'm gonna take you outside oh. look at this wind look at this water see see because it's so windy the water is actually coming in and hitting the the bay wall here or sea wall here and uh coming over the seawall in some instances as you can see that the the path here is is wet because of all this windy conditions man it's cold out here but it's a clear day though that's the thing it's really windy it's a clear day we could see mount fuji actually really really nice this morning in the distance my last day here i'm taking off later tonight um, i had a wonderful time out here thanks to matt and sarah taking me around um, here are the things that i learned out here though in japan you know stringing prices are similar to back home they're about 12 dollars to 20 dollars per string job depending on depending upon where you go and depending upon how fast you need it. So the labor rates are essentially the same. Um, uh, some of the places actually charge a little bit extra for if you bring your own string or reel in. If you use theirs, then it's cheaper, so, which I can understand that. The racket selection, depending upon where you go, you can get anything you want pretty much at that Windsor racket shop as you saw in that particular video if you're in it for the used market or collector's market those other stores that have the used rackets right i think i saw saint vincent's in there it wasn't a great saint vincent pro staff but it was a saint vincent pro staff you can touch and feel um every store had their own rdc machine which I was surprised at. And some of them even had two or three RDC machines. So I was like, oh, I was pretty blown away by that. Um, the stringing machines out here, uh, Yonex, Gozen, Tolson, um, a lot of Japanese brand stringing machines uh, dominate the market. So, you know, the Japanese like to support the Japanese is what I can see. and. And I can totally understand the patriotism that, that these people have for, um, you know, being proud of being Japanese. I totally, totally understand that. And speaking of being proud, uh, the number one selling racket out here, from what I can gather from the stores and what I see is Yonex's top brand. And the number one racket is the new E-Zone 100, number one grip size, is four and a quarter. String-wise, on the poly copoly side, they like soft, soft polys. Yonex Polytor Pro, Hyper G, some of the softer Japanese-made 
poly copolys uh, dominate that poly market. On the synthetic side, the Yonex 850, kind of a Wilson sensation type of a string. The Babylon XL, Babylon Addiction, those strings kind of dominate here in terms of multis. Uh, not too much hybrids going on over here though, interestingly. Uh, whenever I mention hybrid, they're going not too much. So that's a little interesting. Now the one shocker that every store kind of did was they all had private label, private their own brand overgrips. So when I asked them what brand overgrips sold the best, they always said our brand. So my guess is they have a Japanese manufacturer out here and they're saying, put my name on that overgrip. And I think they're the same overgrip. It's like a white kind of super grab pro overgrip type of a grip. And they just put their name of the store on there and they recommend that one. Um, they also have, which is a little less popular over here, is that blue grip that don't slip. <laughs> so they, they kind of have their own kind of Turner grip, which is their own private label out here too. You can get it in the Turner brand, but they're probably going to recommend you the, uh, their own private house label brand. So the overgrip market is what is kind of shocking to me out here. So on the shoe end, the thing that really surprised me was that the Japanese people have wide feet. Yeah, I always thought like they had size seven narrow feet because they had small feet, but number one selling shoes are wide and Prince sells really well out here. A6 wides sell really well out here. I mean, anything wide and they stop their sizes at size 11 in most of the places that I've seen. So I'm an 11, 10 and a half, and they stop at my size. So anybody bigger than that, um, probably going to be hard to find your shoe size. On women's side, they stop at size eight and a half or nine, depending upon which store you go to. So you figure the people are a little smaller out here, so the shoes are going to be a little smaller, but they got wide feet. So they got small, wide shoes. Make sense? Okay, so make sure if you're to pack your shoes, because you're not going to be able to find anything if you're over those sizes. All right, but A6 still dominates out here from what everybody tells me, and they're like the number one um, brand gel resolution eight still sells well. I'm glad I was able to see those gel resolution nines and the Quart FF3 and Novax out here. I was touching and feeling it, trying to buy one, but he was like, mm -mm -mm, January. And I'm like, man, come on, dude. But at least he had one. At least he had one. Uh, Quart FF3 felt lighter. Gel nine felt lighter but I know it's heavier from what I've seen in the catalog. So interesting. All right. So on the ball side, they sell cans of two or cans of four balls. And when I asked them about that, they're like, that's what they do. We use two balls. And I said, uh, what happens if it goes over fence? Or you lose ball, and they just kind of laugh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe it's just us Americans that launch it over the fence, or too lazy to pick up two balls at the same time. Uh, I don't know, but they sell four balls, so it's two or four, <laughs> not three. No, 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 three. Okay, so you buy a four can ball, and you don't have to pick up so many balls, or you get a four ball can and you one court, two ball for this court, two ball for that court, and you save a little bit of money. On the dampener side, they pretty much have all the dampeners that 
we have back at home, except that they have their own kind of one that's a square and has a little thing in the middle that pivots. I forget what the name of it is, but it's like a kangaroo brand or something like that, I want to say. Um, I, I string some rackets for some Japanese hairstylists, and they always bring that to me. And I was like, where'd you get this? He's like, oh, yeah, we got it in Japan. I'm like, oh, cool. So I don't know if it works, but it's a dampener. When I asked the guy which dampener works the best, they actually said, it's like the Gamma Shock Buster. Uh, he says, that works the best out here. I'm so glad that I was able to visit the stores. Uh, they were so nice to allow me to interview them and talk to them about their particular stores and their operations. Um, it's you, whether you play tennis or, or you're a, enthusiasts of tennis you can come out here and you can get a reina like i did you can get a old dr 98 like i did from the book off so if you're a collector of any type they have pretty much everything at any price you just have to look and that's where kind of sarah and matt helped me out because the four stores that we went to are essentially like walking distance from each other. But if you don't have a local person taking you around, I would have been lost um, on a daily basis trying to get to these places because the addresses are hard to find. If you don't have a SIM card in your phone, and even if you do have a local SIM card in your phone, the directions are very, very confusing. It's not like it is back home. I recommend you guys contact Sarah and Matt and have them take you around if you want to go on a tennis tour like I did. Um, my main goal out here was to find a third generation, version three, Reina 98, and I did accomplish my goal. It was definitely touch and go out there for a while because I was like, every store, I was like, no Reina, mm -mm, too popular, sells fast. And I'm like, oh no, I came all the way out here and I'm not gonna get my Regna. So I know I call it Reina, Reina's just sexier. Regna's kinda eh, but um, glad I came out, had a great time. Maybe next time I can go tour the Yonex headquarters if they'll allow me and maybe go out to the manufacturing plant of Yonex. But I'm going to have a little while to plan that one and to contact them um, in, you know, with some spare time. This time I kind of rushed in here because as soon as Japan opened, I wanted to come because it's been like four years. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this adventure with me. And if you're going to come next year, Hey, they're waiting for you, okay? Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. All right, guys, are you looking for a coach, a pro? I know it's been super difficult looking for somebody out there to teach you. I'm in the game myself, and it's super difficult to find somebody to, you know, teach you, somebody to hit with. Um, we know that the number one reason why people give up the game is because they can't find anybody to play with. And now you can't find anybody to teach you. Well, this is where play your court is going to give you a hand. All right, check out play your court. They have professionals. They have hitting partners. They even help you set up a game. The resources are there for you to keep you in the game of tennis. Go to playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin and get your own personal discount from me. Link is below. Stay in the game.